All right, welcome back, folks. Uh, today's instructional objective, students will be able to identify minerals and their properties. Do now says, what things do you use that were mined from the ground? And we're not talking about like rocks, right? We're talking about specifically, what are some of the uses? So your cell phone, right? Most of your cell phone was mined out of the ground. Uh, I give you one example on here. Plastics, they were pumped out of the ground as oil. Um, we do have an activity today, mineral identification. And you have a short uh, three-page worksheet, which is mostly reading, uh, that you can take a look at today. And then we do have a video clip. Our responses, Bradley said, gold, diamond, types of jewelry. That's true. Um, gold and diamonds were both mined from the ground. Co uh, coal, clay. Somebody said, diamonds, oils, phones, dryer. Hmm. I don't know about phones. We don't mine phones from the ground, but we do use like silicon that we pull out of the ground to make the screen on a phone. We do pull silver out of the ground and we use that to make some of the wires in the phone. One, we're gonna move forward. So every American born will need, and we got a list of things here, stuff like bauxite, which we use for iron, coal which we use for running power plants right so the electricity that's going on in your room right now is either probably powered by coal or oil or in some cases if you live on long island queens um, natural gas we've got eighty-two thousand gallons of petroleum that's like several of those giant tankers that you see on the highway filled with petroleum that's just for you over the course of your lifetime uh, 1.6 million pounds of stone, sand, and gravel. That's all for building a highway system, building buildings and structures. Salt, 31,000 pounds of salt. No, you think that's a lot of salt. Right? I like salt in my french fries, but that's a lot of salt. Yeah, so a lot of that is used in manufacturing of goods, and then a lot of that is also used for clearing snow and ice off roads. 1,500 pounds of copper. Some of that, yeah, is pennies. But a good amount of that is also the copper wiring in your house and copper pipes in your home. 1.692 troy ounces of gold. Quite a bit of gold. Much of that is in electronics. And yeah, sure, some of it you wear on your neck. Phosphate rock, we find that in detergent. We also find that in fertilizers. So there are many, many things we pull out of the ground. So let's create a list of some of the rocks and minerals based on your prior knowledge. You don't have to do multiple. Maybe give me uh, your name and then write down the name of one rock, identify it, and one mineral, identify it. So what exactly is a mineral? So minerals are substances that are naturally occurring, inorganic, meaning they are not alive, crystalline solids. They have definite chemical composition and molecular structure. So this uh, substance to the right that you're looking at looks like gold. It's gold colored. This is actually what we call fool's gold. This is pyrite. It's one of the most common minerals we can actually find here in New York State. And it's all about the internal arrangement of the atoms that gives it its color and its shape and its structure. Uh, so where are minerals found? We find all minerals in the lithosphere, find it in the crust. All rocks are made up of minerals. So not all minerals are rocks, but all rocks contain minerals. Now here's an example. Some rocks can be monomineralic. Mono meaning one, like monotheistic, meaning one god. Monomineralic means one mineral. Polymineralic meaning two or more, or many, is the same idea as like polytheistic, having many gods. So on the left we have, I think that's fluorite, that's one mineral, and on the right here we have quartz, uh, I'm sorry, um, granite, which is made up of quartz and, uh, what is that, biotite mica, plagiocles feldspar, potassium feldspar, all those different things make up that one rock. So there are literally thousands of different types of minerals. I think last time I looked, it was like 30,000 different kinds. Um, but approximately 12 of them make up most, or around 90% of the lithosphere. So what are our common ones? Well, you're in luck. ESRT page 16 contains them all. We've got things like graphite and galena and talc and sulfur and halite 
and calcite, dolomite, fluorine, quartz, those are like the 90% that make up our planet, or our crust at least. So what are minerals made of? One or more elements. Now an element, if you don't remember from back to eighth grade uh, you know, physical science class, elements are substances that cannot be broken down into smaller substances. So I'm not saying like elements like fire, wind, water. No. I'm talking about elements like silicon, oxygen, sulfur, potassium. Those are the fundamental building blocks of everything. So for example, SiO4, silicon and oxygen, they create the element quartz, sorry, the mineral quartz. Silicon is an element, oxygen is an element, quartz is our substance. Uh, and while I got you here, I'm going to pull up a reference table. And let's take a look together at page 16. Okay, so if you take a look here at page 16, and let me just zoom in a bit, you can see that quartz, it's right here. Uh, you might also notice it's listed at SiO2. Quartz comes in two flavors, SiO2 and SiO4, uh, but they're essentially the same thing. Um, it's silicon and oxygen. How do you know? Well, the Si, you look at the bottom, Si is silicon, and O2 is made up of oxygen, O, so you can see oxygen. And the nice thing about this package is it provides a lot of information, like for example, the luster, the hardness, does the mineral have cleavage or fracture? What are its common colors, its characteristics, its uses, its composition, and the name? And you get all that just from like reading across these rows. And we're going to look at this tomorrow, but um, this is where you would go to find out the elements, right? or in this case they call it the chemical symbols. Now, the most abundant element in the crust is oxygen. So if we take a look on Earth Science Reference Table, page 1, head back to this one, you can see under our chart here that's called the average chemical composition of the Earth's crust, hydrosphere, and troposphere. Crust is the ground, hydrosphere is the ocean, troposphere is the sky. You'll notice that oxygen makes up about 94% of the Earth's surface. I'm not talking about the air, I'm talking about the rocks. And that all comes down to sand, known as silicon. It's the second most popular one, at 28% by mass and at 0.8% by volume. So you can see here that these two, silicon and oxygen, they make up the bulk of the Earth. And again, what is silicon and oxygen? Sand, SiO4. And this is what it looks like uh, if we can take a look at it on the atomic scale. SiO4, four uh, oxygens, one silicon in the middle, produces this pyramid shape. Sometimes we call it a tetrahedron. And these silicon tetrahedrons, those are the building blocks of sand. As you can see, minerals come in a variety of shapes, patterns, colors, structures, composition. And again, we'll, tomorrow we'll spend the day taking a look at some of those. But today I just want to introduce you to some of the tests that we do. Like for example, hardness. So if you'll notice here, I have a glass street plate. And this street plate that we use, we could scratch a mineral on it. If it could scratch the glass, I know it's harder than the glass. If it can't, I know it's softer than the glass. Gives me a good idea of how hard it is. Streak. You'll notice here we have a ceramic plate. If you take one, for example, this gold-colored mineral, and I run a streak across it, it provides a black-green streak. Notice the streak is different than the color of the mineral. More evidence to figure out what that mineral is. Luster. You could have them as metallic or non-metallic. Metallic means it looks like, well, a piece of metal. Non-metallic means it looks like a piece of dirt or a piece of glass. So either it looks like metal or it doesn't. That's your luster. Cleavage and fracture. Cleavage looks like somebody chopped it up with a meat cleaver. See the word cleavage, cleaver? Uh, cleavage just means to cut into sharp lines. So you can see here the guy on the left, that's a piece of calcite, and you can see that because it's got cleavage that shows straight lines in a parallelogram shape. 
in a rhombohedral shape. Fracture doesn't. And then there's always these weird guys like calcite, halite, magnetite, and sulfur that have their own special properties. Like magnetite is magnetic. It'll attract a paper clip. It'll attract metal. Sulfur smells like rotten eggs. Halite tastes like salt. Well, because it is salt. And calcite reacts with acid. And tomorrow we'll put a couple drops of acid on it and see it bubble. So color, not a good idea. We don't like using color with mineral identification because many minerals come in a variety of colors. So this is all quartz. Some are pink, some are purple, some are white, some are milky colored. Um, yeah, so we use this as a last resort. And you can just see all the variety that they have. In fact, this one here is flexible. Flexible and thin sheets. Call that cleavage. Because you can see how it's got flat sides. All right, so I'm going to give you guys uh, about three minutes to answer this question. You're going to pick one of the questions on here. How can learning about minerals make us better citizens? Two, you can summarize a lesson. Or three, identify a research question and describe an investigation a scientist could do relating to minerals. You'll head to our Google Classroom. You'll click on Classwork. And you'll notice there's a new topic, week of 1-4-2021, Mineral Identification. You have a copy of today's PowerPoint. You have a short eight-minute video. And then you have a handout. Clicking through the handout, let me share my screen while I'm at this. Clicking through the handout sends you to this page right here. Zoom in a bit. You have a small section on reading, uh, reading about minerals. And then uh, you need to identify the main ideas, answer a few questions. Same thing here, you have a vocabulary component. So you can test your vocabulary on those terms that you just read about and a little bit more active reading. All right, so this is due tomorrow by midnight. Um, there will be no additional homework tomorrow. Tomorrow we will be meeting and we're going to be taking a look at mineral samples. All right, so if you haven't finished answering that question, finish answering it. Um, when you're done with that, you want to complete work on your assignment, the handout, and if you have any additional questions, I will be hanging out here. Um, so you have until about 11.38. Uh, if you need anything, just jump on and I will be more than happy to assist you.